Hey folks, welcome. Today we have Jeff Rothy from Full Contact. We're gonna show you a demo of the identity resolution platform of Full Contact. Jeff, how are you today? I'm doing good. So, let's see the demo. Yeah, absolutely. So, wanna really show what the install process looks like and it's really simple from the marketplace. So we're gonna first pull up the marketplace and take a look at our listings. So we're gonna search for full contact. We have our main core application here. Customers can try out for free for 14 days to get a sense for how the application works and better get a sense if, they don't, if they're new to identity resolution, how they would design a pilot successfully for them. So it's just really a one-click install, right? You, you click Get, you choose a warehouse, you name your application, and then it installs. Uh, from a consumer side, that's very simple. From a provider side, very compelling from a management and overhead perspective because in the background, uh, this application is copying over our logic, copying over terabytes of data, and replicating it over to a different cloud region that matches what the customer has. And when we as a provider are providing our app to customers across North America, that is a huge value add in terms of overhead and management of that process to make sure customers can get onboarded quickly. So I, I love this. One of the big announcements that we made at Summit regarding native apps was the ability to have custom billing events. Can you talk to me a little bit about you know, what, how do you, uh, do you leverage custom billing events today? And, and if so, how do you leverage those? I'm going to be honest with you. We, so we tracked right along on your different options for monetization. Custom billing events, I think, may have come out of our own individual feedback. Yeah. So I think we have plans in the future at looking at that for sure. Um, but I, I think we're going to show some interesting things here that will uh, convey the range of options a provider has to monetize their apps that are both what uh, you provide in platform, which are very flexible, as well as options that can be provided in a combination outside the platform with, as well as inside. So we've got the application installed. So from here, a customer is going to go through and do some additional configuration steps. Snowflake is very awesome in what they built in Streamlit and recently released a SDK in Python to be able to have a very bespoke user flow on how to set up the right permissions and objects within Snowflake to be able to use an app. And it also provides that governance to the user so they can go back and reflect on what permission have I given this app to do on my data at any point in time. So that's a really important consideration for uh, any organization. So we're gonna request that a customer sets up an API integration and some external functions. When I talked about the monetization, these things track usage for us in our backend system. So those are required to use the app. We also have to give access to the app to be able to uh, use both the API integration as well as grant what's a app specific role to your existing roles. Uh, so that's another step. And then the final step, we do require a full contact API key. Uh, so uh, it's a really quick setup on our platform at platform.fullcontact.com. I mean, you're going to put in your API key, and after that, you're pretty much ready to go. So you can see there that that setup uh, reasonably takes less than five minutes. It can take as short as one or two minutes. That's impressive. That's awesome. So it's very quick to install the app, as you can see. Once the app is installed, you're going to come into the Streamlit UI that we built to help guide you through what you need to do to set up the app. The developer, anytime, if they want to see more under the hood, they can click through these different steps here on the left, and they can do the manual creation. So we provide the SQL here for them to be able to do that on their own if they feel more comfort that way. But we've gone through this process. You can see that it's less than a minute or two to really get it set up and get working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show a little bit about how the app works in a applied customer story. I feel like stories help us understand things in a more simple way. And identity resolution, even with my explanation earlier, can be a little bit abstract for people. So we're going to be looking at a fictional customer, a fictional organization called Urban Roots. So Urban Roots sells hydroponic equipment to home consumers. Uh, they 
consumers that like to grow their own fresh produce uh, in a sustainable way. Okay, so they have uh, different data about their customers from their in-store and their online presence, and each of those sets of data are going to contain potentially disparate pieces about a customer that may or may not be up to date with that particular customer. So as we're going to pull up an example table here, our customer lifetime spend, you're going to see a, a sample customer called Will Underwood. You know, and the marketing would have a sense when they're building their audiences and their segmentation at scale that they may not have the total addressable audience that they need. And this is a, an example of how. Willow James, before she was married, then ultimately took the name Will, Will Underwood. Um, she spent a certain amount of money in store purchasing products when she was in a large metropolitan area. But after she was married, she moved and she was no longer close to a store. She started to have to order products online. And so she's got multiple profiles here where she's made purchases over time. The marketing team is trying with a campaign to launch a new hydroponic product. It's an AI hydroponic product, so it's got more advanced sensors, it's got some software component to set the system kind of on autopilot, and they feel like a customer that's already invested heavily in purchasing accessories and setup is going to be interested in this product. So their marketing team is roughly targeting someone that's got a, a lifetime spend of over $1,000, close to $2,000 as part of their segmentation. And granted, that's an oversimplified segmentation, but for the purpose of the demo. So what we need to do with Willow's information is we need to understand with high certainty that this Willow is the same Willow. Willow is a unique name, but imagine John Smith, where you can't be confident that that is one single individual. So we're gonna take this table and run it through our Resolve application. So the Resolve call is really simple. All you need is a table as an input, and then you're gonna get the Resolve outputs afterwards. Your resolved output table is gonna contain an appended person ID. That's at a individual person level, a unique identifier that allows you to key different data sets together. If your data isn't ready in a, a form for application to accept, we also have a helper function there that'll help you create a view that can be used as input. So the resolve function is gonna run for a, a short amount of time. And just keep in mind here that we're running against billions of fragments of data. Part of the value that we provide to customers is that we provide the linkages. We provide all the overhead in maintaining these different structures as data changes over time from consumers. And we provide this to customers in a, in a way that it's a simple function to call. And that's the scope of it. Our app in a way looks overly simplified in how you use it, but that's part of the value is that all the heavy lifting is done in the back end, and what we've put together is powered by Snowflake in our app for a customer experience to be really simple. So you can see now that we've resolved our data. Now we can get back to better understanding Willow's profile. So we've assigned, you can see that our resolve function has assigned the same person ID to Willow on each of her records. So now marketing can go back, aggregate those records together, and get a more concrete view of the lifetime value of Willow, which you see here is actually closer to $1,700 in her in-store and online purchases. So that's really compelling. So the marketing team is looking to launch this product. They're not looking to just target existing customers, but they also want to try to engage and get customers that haven't purchased to make that initial purchase. And they feel like an AI enhanced product is really a compelling offer. So they also want to target from their different data sets, customers that have been browsing their website, again, existing customers in terms of someone who has signed up for a newsletter, but hasn't yet made a purchase. So we want to understand someone that has been browsing high-end hydroponic kits on the website, maybe they'd be interested in this new product, this new AI hydroponic product. So what we're gonna do is we've already resolved, in the interest of time, we've already resolved this set of newsletter data from a customer who signed up for, for email information. 
And we've also got a table here that tracks our web events from the website. And in these web events, we've appended a person ID and it contains log data about where a customer has browsed, actions that have been taken on the website, like a product view or an add to cart or viewing a, a particular part of a product description. So we're able to then cross-reference between your known customers and your newsletter subscription database and the log events from the website and understand, well, these are the customers that are interested in home kits. We can now market to them. Um, so what we're showing here on the screen is that intersection. That's kind of the power of Resolve itself. So what do you do with Resolve after you've appended these ideas? You need to take some action on the customer. That's where data enrichment can play a role. So we also have a, a native set of capabilities to do what we call media amplification. So that's taking a customer's profile and doing appends to add hashed email addresses and mobile ad IDs, typically to do customer acquisition, social media paid channels. So a user can then take these resolved customer records, run them through our media amplification, and they will get back those appended results that they can then take uh, again and activate them outside of Snowflake. So that function is run, and we've appended the results to it. So we'll pull those up to just give you for what that. So for each record, we've got that original person ID, and now we've got a couple of additional columns appended here that are going to be your hashed emails and your mobile ad IDs. And we provide some metadata there to help you make better decisions about we have certain amount of observances of these pieces of data over time. That's part of the value we provide is that lineage with our identity graph. So you can make a decision on maybe you want to spend more money on email addresses that have more of a freshness to them than not. Uh, and same with the mobile ad IDs. That gives you a really quick taste of some of the things we're able to do with our native application from uh, helping understand customer browsing behaviors, your existing customers browsing your website, resolving those records and tying parts and pieces together, and then further adding enrichment data to activate on those customers. It was really cool to learn about how you've built this native application on Snowflake, how it's powered by Snowflake. You are able to use AI within your application. Uh, thanks for showing me all that. Yeah, no problem. And folks, if you want to learn how to build your next application on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. And if you want to see a full interview today with Jeff in full contact, be sure and check out the link below. My name is Daniel Myers. See you next time.